it's been a while since my review of the original Friday the 13th, it's safe to assume that my criticisms of that film had to do with a lack of at least 12 different romantic subplots, musical numbers, and an over two hour runtime. Thankfully, though, we have the Bollywood musical remake of Friday the 13th called Seven Cell Bud, which not only has an epic poster, but a plot line which seems to have been shit out by the power of dance. Clearly, the movie was made because they knew one day an internet reviewer would be in a predicament when a Friday the 13th happens in the same month as Musical March in September. The film was released in 1987, but was apparently made in 1983, and is about a married couple who purchase a mysterious hotel where guests are either murdered by a heavy melodrama or heavy knife blades. Just like Friday the 13th. But, no joke, despite the plot sounding more like a Bollywood remake of Mountaintop Motel Massacre, it actually does follow a high majority of scenes from the original Friday the 13th. Must be why the movie opens up by saying that it is a certified Friday the 13th, so you don't accidentally end up with that Saturday the 14th bullshit. And you know you're watching something secret when it has to blur out the production logos. There's lots of information here. I see the running time is the average length for a Bollywood movie, 771 minutes. Sure, no one under 18 will be permitted, possibly due to the ushers passing out cigarettes. And remember, this is not valid for video because we are a VCD family. Brace yourself. This movie opens like a jolt of electricity being shot right into your dick. And that's just the title screen. I can feel the power of dance already. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Well, so much for Pamela Voorhees being in the MCU. There is a lot of mystery in this film already. Such as, where the hell did the moon go? I have no idea what's going on, but it appears the movie is drawing me a nice hot bath. Wait, is this the beginning of the movie? How the hell does this two-hour Friday the 13th remake just skip to the ending? I'm awfully confused, too. This movie is chasing its own shadow. Much like the original opening, there is a killer, and there is a campfire. <laughs> If you sing and dance around a fire for this long, you're either going to run into a slasher villain or a shark. <laughs> or Pazuzu will show up. Meanwhile, at Jason's house, you know what the creepiest thing in this hotel is? <laughs> the back hair. Definitely the back hair. Unfortunately, there's no mirrors in the room to break and cut to the opening, so that frustrates the killer. I'm calling it, the editor is the killer. But he did find a girl to kill and a mirror to break for the opening. This is too funky for the Friday the 13th opening. Clearly, I am watching an Indian remake of Friday the 13th 3D. Comes with some nice dance beats and screaming. <laughs> hmm, guess the public relations guy saw a spider. I'm mildly in love with this Funkalicious theme music. The credit sequence is quite long, but the best part is... It's still going. I guess this is Annie, the hitchhiking camp counselor. You gotta run from the killer in those shoes, honey. <laughs> Good luck. Every once in a while they say something in English, but for the most part... Oh yeah, I'm sure he just said that. If she pulls out a banana, we'll know if she's the hitchhiker from part four. happy <laughs> home. I told you already, we're a VCD family! 
This scene is too hot for the guy in the background, so he casually puts on his shades. That way he can look like a badass when he takes them off when talking to her. She needs a ride, so he'll be the truck driver. Too bad they couldn't stay longer. Paul's has the best in Galatians food. This is all really familiar. <laughs> ah, Crazier Ralph 4. Should have seen you coming. The fake subtitles don't even need to be put in. I'm sure that they're all doomed and the hotel is cursed. And he stole Mickey Mouse's gloves. See you later on in the pantry, Ralph Orr. <laughs> Bye. That is, if they make it there. Should he really be driving with the blurred out production logo over his eyes? This is like if the truck driver in the original tried way harder to bang Annie. Let's go to Happy Home. If something bad happens here, we can sue them for false advertising. It's a slasher movie, so there's definitely a horny couple. <laughs> sure they do. It's just more awkward. <laughs> Great, I always thought Friday the 13th needed an annoying kid. That's why no one saved Jason. He may have saved puppies and chickens, but his voice was super annoying. And don't forget, it is a musical. <laughs> Friday the 13th. Can't wait for the Strip Monopoly song. Blurring over that dance sequence won't be tedious at all. Everyone appears to be high off their ass, including the cast and crew. So I think they're all gonna get slaughtered. But not before the song finishes. <laughs> Oh, I guess this is the Strip Monopoly song. But where's the classic Friday the 13th theme? Wrong. It's ki 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 ma ma ma, even though it doesn't sound like that. She's still hitchhiking, I guess. Don't know why she bothered asking these two, and I also don't know why they stopped. Oh, to check out her ass in front of his lady friend. Makes sense. She's angry and depressed because the amount of time left in this movie is longer than the entirety of the original Friday the 13th. And rightfully so, because all of this is completely necessary. Should I be watching this? Why is this in Peeping Tom Vision? Do they even know they're in a movie right now? I think these two do because they're posing for the Bollywood moment by moment poster. As long as he has significantly less back hair than the first guy, they should be safe. But not from the drama. <laughs> Why must this be so damn soap opery? And don't let some good slapstick get in the way. <laughs> oh, hello. I think I want to bang you now instead. Here, take a bath in the opening credits and whatever this flashback is. <laughs> don't mind his nasty breath. He probably shouldn't have eaten a whole uncooked salmon before kissing the bride. Just what this movie needs. More characters. <laughs> I'm guessing he's bad. Oh, it's just Super Mario. He'll save us from Bowser's murderous wrath. I'm assuming they're all arguing on who has to chop the head off of the snake in the cabin. Your wife. Yes. I still don't know what's going on. I just have the feeling it's very love triangly. Just look at this drama. <laughs> Mm, clever, but she's not even in the room anymore. And you're ignoring the biggest threat in this hotel. Flashbacks. <laughs> Shit, you're in danger. The You're Doomed gang is all here. Thank God Charles Bronson saves her from Bollywood Nail Gun Massacre. <laughs> Just another clip from the classic sequel, Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Miami Connection. Ooh, I am riveted.
just because you don't know what's going on doesn't mean that it's not still the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Wait, what? Is he going to prison? <laughs> Ooh, it's like if the O.J. Simpson trial actually did have the dancing Edos in it. Mmm, <laughs> it's no he's guilty from Cop Rock, but it'll do the trick, at least for the time being, because this scene isn't even done yet. <laughs> Even though I had 12 seizures watching this trial, it's still the most exciting episode of the People's Court that I've ever seen. Harsh! Well, I guess that was a flashback of this guy, I suppose. Sure. Anything else to cut to? <laughs> Well, Bollywood Ned is here. Excellent, it's our fifth instance of love at first just stab someone already. Maybe in Bollywood Nightmare on Elm Street we can actually see Jesse and Grady bang. They spared no expense in dancing or stunt work. <laughs> No need for the slasher killer to pick them off. I think they're doing a good enough job getting themselves killed. The motorcycle's gonna get it too since it's also having premarital sex. Okay, graphic. This is what happens when you don't have Officer Dorf around to say who we don't stand for no weirdness around here. We now return to Hotel Uncle Rico. Oh, I am a disco dancer. I snort to the angel dust off of how you say Bee Gees records, yes? We don't care if you injure your knee. This may be an unlucky day, but we're gonna force this musical on you or else we'll cut to the chef from sleepaway camp. This movie needs an adult or at least an Angela with a big pot of boiling water. Um, is this movie in love with me now? Oh, never mind. He's in love with giving himself plastic surgery. Wipe that hot sauce off your arm! As you can see, I'm in love with you. You can use my arm as a dipping sauce for fish sticks. Didn't this movie used to have a creepy-eyed murderer in it? I'm a disco dancer. <laughs> Guess not anymore. We just have this guy murdering the art of disco dancing. This is quite the journey we're on. Why not? Sure. Sums up my thoughts on picking this movie for the show. Why not? Sure. Maybe this is like a convict slash Inspector Clouseau of the movie. Though I don't know about his theories. <laughs> I just don't know if Manimal had anything to do with it. The editor, on the other hand, he's definitely on some shit. He's got a new dance. It's called I Am A Disco Dancer is the only English sentence I know. <laughs> Friday the 13th really was the Catalina caper of its day. This only proves that if the break in series went on long enough, it definitely would have crossed over with Friday the 13th. I can't put my finger on it, I just feel like a ninja should show up at some point. Hey, remember that time when the electric company was slaughtered in a hotel? This movie does. Let's go bother this guy, we can win him over by switching up the tune. Great, you switch the song and now you're stuck in a tree, that's how that works. And shouldn't Krizir Ralfour be in their pantry at this point? <laughs> wow, so many new revelations are happening. Oh. I'm not so sure I would care about this, even if I did know what they're saying. Well, okay, maybe I care a little. 
Shocker, the inspector does not trust the convict. Well, that seemed unnecessary. Oh, are we still on the hitchhiker? That hasn't wrapped up yet. Mm, she's lost and so is the movie. Oh, hey, never mind. She's not lost. She found Friday the 13th. She's being chased by a runaway collection of stock footage. I've never seen a movie literally chase its climax. She appears to want the movie to end so bad that she pulls in the camera and the killer to stab herself. <laughs> and she was transitioned to death. This is getting suspenseful. I appreciate this movie wants to stay in shape, but choose your own time for your aerobics workout. This looks like if the 70s tried making a slasher movie variety show. Why not? They did a variety show on everything else. This could have replaced Pink Lady and Jeff. Ooh, can't blood. Can you dig it? Why not just call the movie Saturday the 14th Night Fever? Makes sense. Zoom. I never thought a slasher movie could be a great double feature with John Travolto de un insolito destino. Oh, that's right. Travolta's ploitation exists. I would ask myself how there's still 50 minutes of this movie left, but I think this sequence and all of them like it answer that question. They've been going on for 12 hours. Do we ask them to stop? Oh, no. We join in. Even if Crash Zoom McGreat Face ends everyone's good time, still better than the horror movie going on outside. I sure hope that's the ninja that I asked for earlier. Hmm, this is definitely the jack of the movie. Over in this country, they have a game called Six Degrees of This Guy. He has the magic touch of five seconds of sex and a quick putting the clothes back on cut. Sounds like he's also cursed. I'm sensing some killers and thieves. Because she stole Kevin Bacon's death scene. Ah, good. It's now Bollywood Forrest Gump. I don't know what that means, but I do know someone is killed with a hot poker, so the opening credits called it. They did add some Friday the 13th 3D ingredients. That also means Bollywood One from the Heart is gonna creep in. I mean, practically the same movie. Oh damn, without the subtitles, I don't know what they're saying. Ooh, this is being filmed in Jealous Vision. At least someone wants the movie to get on with its conclusion, even with the word salad. Ha ha, I am committing suicide. My foot. I know those words, but I don't know if that was a real conversation. Speaking of conversations, welcome to the next act of the movie. Sleeping beauty, <laughs> Oh, great. He's going to make out with someone passed out, isn't he? Thankfully, his dance moves may wake them up. This sequence goes on so long that I'm surprised this isn't a three-hour movie. I think they start killing each other just so something happens. And the crowd goes wild. Seriously. <laughs> I'm not sure if those people were really there. But I can tell you this about the movie. A dance scene is definitely going to happen. You gotta love when a movie comes with its own music video tie-in. Now pay close attention, I think the robot may be the killer. I know this may seem weird, but it's pretty par for the course at this point. They're one ELOs all over the world away from filming on location in Xanadu. They could insert this sequence into Bollywood Mannequin and no one would know the difference. This is the first movie where afterwards my abs are really killing me. I wasn't expecting to get in this good of a workout today. This is only the second weirdest General Motors short I've seen. Anyway, enough of that daydream. I'm drunk and this movie's showing no signs of ending. But I know at least one thing about the killer. 
He's really damn rude! Gee, after hearing that strange sound, maybe you shouldn't go up to the stormy-ass rooftop to investigate. Stay inside and raid Steve Christie's wardrobe like this guy. Lord, there's 30 minutes of dance for every one minute of plot. Here you go, one whole Jägermeister to yourself. This will make the rest go by quick. With the movie now being shot in drunk vision, even the people behind the camera are wasted. Uh, I could have watched the first eight Friday the 13ths in the amount of time it's taken to... God bless you. Uh, thank you. The hell? Damn, he's really shit-faced. He must also be the cinematographer. But I've got a theory now on who the killer is. Muy Pennywise the Clown? Does everything I do recently have to be it related? He'll blame it on a spider once his abusive dad comes in. These stains are all gonna be added to his hotel bill. And stop going to the roof when you need help. A great idea. If you see blood in the sink, go to the highest place you can think of, all while fighting off the paparazzi. <laughs> Oh no! Who's gonna sing about it? Great, I guess I'll take over as the resident drunk guy. The power to all our dance moves has been cut. What are we supposed to do? Stand here and not dance when we're killed? Anyway, stop going outside when you hear a calling for your own untimely death. Wait, so is this guy the killer? I don't know. He's kind of acting like it. <laughs> I think I'm following this now. I know that Bollywood Bill is dead and stuck to the door, but... Your guess is as good as mine on this or anything else. Even other movies are appearing. Here's poor Bob from Bollywood Halloween. And even foreign language versions of Friday the 13th have someone crashing through a window, sorta. Never too late for a new character, though, even if she's confusing this for Bollywood times at the El Royale. Wait a minute. Hang on. This is a lot like Friday the 13th. <laughs> I get it. Clever. So yes, that is our killer. And yes, it has to do with revenge for a drowning. Although, <laughs> I have never seen Jason Voorhees' death as a child be portrayed so hilariously. Help me, please! God said help me! Please, Bajo! Bajo, help me, please! God said help me! <laughs> sure! He may have died, but don't be too upset about it, Mrs. Voorhees. At least we got a great laugh out of it. Jesus Christ! That was terrifying! How am I supposed to dance to that? Bollywood Angelina Jolie is pissed. I suppose this is going to set up for a long chase through the hotel, much like the campground in the original. Or maybe not that long. There's only five minutes of the movie left. The dance scenes are five times longer than the actual plot resolution. Much like Betsy Palmer, the killer is the best performance in the movie. They do try to drag it out, though, with a lot of slow motion. It's a short sequence, but lasts long enough for it to now be daylight. I don't know how plots or weather work anymore. For instance, it's nighttime again, and I think she's a vampire. <laughs> Well, this makes it believable that in the Friday the 13th game, Mrs. Voorhees' head would come to life and kill you. Oh, I shouldn't have cut away. We've got no time to waste. Seriously, this is like someone pressed fast forward on the original. How does the longer version simultaneously feel like the Cliff Notes version? Sorry, ma'am. Not only did we not find a boy, but we also don't see a sequel anywhere in sight. So that means you won't be killed at the beginning of the second film. Well, that movie was exhausting. With the singing and dancing and slasher movieing, all you really need to do is replace the killer with Z-Man, and what you got is a Bollywood remake of Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. 
Considering if it weren't Musical March in September, it would have been the actual Friday the 13th remake spotlighted this month. But I think we all know which remake is better. I don't recall the 2009 Friday the 13th remake ever having a single scene in it reminiscent of John G. Avildsen's A Night in Heaven, which is clearly a huge flaw. Then again, I don't think that Friday the 13th remake is 18 hours long, so it's got that going for it. Can't wait for the Bollywood musical remake of Jaws, where, uh, why do I even have to make anything up? Of course that movie exists! Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got more high school musicals to watch, or I pray they also turn into a slasher film, if anything, because the title, Slaughter High School Musical, just writes itself. Thank you.